From In the Beginning to the Musical Apocalypse, this is The Bible Says What. I'm your host, Mike Wiseman. When the magic and make-believe begin to fade and reality creeps in or worse yet punches you in the gut, it's not easy. I had such a hard time letting go of the fears and beliefs I was indoctrinated into. I struggled constantly with the thought of hellfire and the tribulation. The Christianity was deep-rooted. It wasn't an easy journey. I remember weighing my options of believing now versus conforming after the rapture. I remember thinking I could do like they did in those Thief in the Night tribulation movies. I would hide out and join a militia. Even if I got caught, the bad guys would just decapitate me, and then I can go to heaven and all would be right. I could have my cake and eat it too. So I began to set aside the thought of eternal punishment and started living without fear. Before long, I started to seriously doubt the whole God thing. I never heard from the guy and Jesus was completely absent. At this point, I hadn't even started to look into the book I was taught held life-saving truths. Throughout my childhood, my television and music were closely monitored and filtered. If I didn't glorify Yahweh, it was deemed secular and therefore sinful or demonically influenced. My Jesus bubble kept me from many things. Opposition was one of those things. As a teenager, I remember listening to George Carlin expressing his thoughts on God and religion. George was the first person I ever heard talking negatively about God and religion, and everything he said about it made perfect sense. The blasphemy he was spouting was just a stepping stone on my journey out of Christianity, but he was a big fucking stone. Thanks, George. Let's start the show. Is there anything in the Bible that you yourself have an issue with? <laughs> okay, so it took you reading the Bible to realize that those things were bad for you? Yeah, it actually did. I, I didn't figure this out on your own? No, Ted, Ted Bundy could be redeemed. God doesn't kill children. Does, what, what do you think the Passover was? Yahweh sets up a whole system in the Old Testament where you slaughter animals just so he's able to forgive you. Today's special guest is Christian family law attorney Peter Olson. Welcome to the show, Peter. Hey, so uh, thankful for having me, Michael. Good Absolutely. to be here. Absolutely, man. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for taking the time. Tell us a little bit about what you do. Well, um, I support people's, I support family transformation is what I, what I say. Um, hmm. I guess the crux of my work is I'm a family law, divorce and child custody attorney in Chicago. And um, also have a couple of other, I wouldn't even say they're side hustles anymore, but I've started to sell some di digital products. Um, have a course out there called Achieve Your Magnificent Marriage, actually. Hmm. Just thinking of other needs that our clients have, you know, parenting after a divorce, hmm. things to think about before they get married, thing like, things like that. Because, right, there's only, there's only so much time you have when you're talking about one-on-one -on -one legal services. So I really want to, you know, I want to help that person in Sydney, Australia through a digital digital product beyond just my, uh, you know, divorce and child custody clients in Chicago. Nice. Well, what, what do you focus on with that course? Um, that course has five lessons. Boy, it's basically kind of a from pre-marriage to, you know, struggles in the early years of marriage to I think, I, have a, I think one of the lessons is what's the matter with kids? Um, <laughs> hey, Let me list hey, the ways. <laughs> hey, there is, hey, right? For, they're, they're a big stress point, right? I mean, it ain't, it ain't easy when you have a six when you have a six month old over there. Or six year old. Um, <laughs> or 16 right, year old. Um, there's 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 a lesson actually. What if what's it called? Create a, you know, force change, create a crisis, kind of mm. the idea of using divorce or legal separation to sometimes improve your marriage, believe it or not. Sometimes that's a nice little like heart attack to get to get your mm. marriage starting to eat healthier, if you will. Mm. Um, and then I think, oh, the last one is just sort of about um, sort of just habits and stuff to right be 
you know, building and growing a better marriage rather than being the person who's been married for 55 years and is miserable. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, where, you know, yeah, yes. <laughs> for sure. So where is, where is Yahweh? Your, where is your God in all of this? Where is uh, my God in all this? Um, he's, I mean, he, are you talking it's at part of the courses level? what's what's the courses um oh no a part of the courses forgive me yeah yeah um the course espouses a christian worldview and is going but let me let me say this the mm -hmm. the course the course really draws on four i would say somewhat unique tenets to me and those are right i'm I'm somebody who sees a lot of marital breakup in my day job. Mm, yeah. So, so that's a source of the teaching. Um, biblical marriage theology is a source of the teaching. Um, my personal ups and downs experience as a person who's been married for 16 years is part of the course. And frankly, just like academic social science research is part of the course. It's those four streams that 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 are really in the course. Hmm. Because I don't know. So it's not a That's, real big, heavy focus on, you know, let's let's rely on God to help us through this. If you just focus on God, God can heal your marriage type stuff. I don't know if those are equal, like 25% parts. I mean, my, you know, I'm a follower, I'm a follower of Jesus and a spouse hmm. Christianity. Um, but, you know, hmm. I think a, a, a person who doesn't have that worldview, I mean, you know, why is the United States government kind of have a pro, you know, and I don't mean even like, depending on like where you are on the spectrum, but, you know, there are different, like, you know, public policies that support the idea of marriage. And I think, you know, if you look at the research on like, you know, hmm. wealth, wealth, health, a lot of demographic factors support the idea that, you know, being married is, I don't know, you look at the poverty rate for a married family versus the poverty rate for a single parent home, it's like astronomically different. So yeah, it takes you know, two incomes so most of the time, you know. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. I, think it's, I don't know, it's like seven or eight percent of married family, you know, children in poverty in a married family versus a single mm. parent, I think it's somewhere around a third of those kids mm. are being raised in poverty. And I mean, right, like you said, I mean, some of it's just right. The simple basic math of it is right. Yeah. Two, yeah it's, it's two hard to potential survive out incomes there. versus one, or even, you know, my wife, my wife is not currently like earning income, but right. She's doing a ton of stuff that mm. I'm not doing. And that allows me to, in a, in a sense, be, you know, maybe a more prolific income earner. Mm. Because Gives you I'm time to do your stuff. <laughs> absolutely so, um that's the crux of the course though mm, gotcha gosh gotcha. four things so let's get let's dive into the deity part let's dive into to your god your beliefs and all that thank you for that by the way um so can you describe this god your, your god um can i describe this god that i believe in yeah uh, um like me I, yeah. i'm bald facial hair angry you know <laughs> how well, would you describe can you describe him oh my gosh you know this this is the lawyer on your show not the uh the pastor who's going to four years of seminary but um <laughs> no i don't expect you to be a bible that's expert a, by, all, by all means <laughs> that's fair um so um i'm you know human beings are created in god's image so i think you know the god i'm talking about looks might look like you or me. Mm -hmm. um, he is always referred to in the he. So mm -hmm. I think he probably looks like you or me. Is he? Is he a white guy with a beard or a white guy with uh, spiked hair? I don't think there's any necessary <laughs> basis for that. Mm -hmm. But um, that's my physical picture of of God. And, so humanoid, uh, male humanoid. Yes. Gotcha. Gotcha. Is is. Can you describe him further? Like, is he is he the loving Christian deity, like the, a lot of Christians ascribe to, or is he is he just like one of those deities that came in and it made the universe and just took the rest of the time off? I mean, is he is he hands on? Is he? Oh well, I think he's hands on. I mean, I you know I would subscribe to the view, right? He my my worldview would be he created the world mm -hmm. as you know as outlined in Genesis. And he's, he's with me now, right? Um, 
through through his Holy Spirit. Okay. And, I mean, that's that's where I would come down in terms of his presence and activeness in you know my my individual life and kind of you know control of the world and events. So he's in control of the world and your life, my life, everybody's life in control. He's just that, in control. Yeah, that would yes. So he's in control and he's with you through the Holy Spirit. Now, that is a very confusing thing to me. How does that work? He's he's there physically with you, but it's his ghost who you can't see. How does that work? Well, um, how does that work? Um because to me, it's very well, confusing. Holy... Like it doesn't, you know, it just it doesn't make a whole no, lot of sense that... to me. And I try to understand. Yeah, that's that's totally legit. I mean, X, I mean, X2, one or two, right? Hmm. He talks about how, you know, wait, basically when at, at the day of Pentecost, God's Holy Spirit was was brought into the world and and he is with me as the third person of of kind of the Trinity. Um, can I give you a super better answer to say exactly <laughs> what that looks like? Yeah. Mm, you might need to, you know, grab Erwin Lutzer or John Piper for that that answer. You're good. You're good. I'm just I'm just trying to picture like a court of law. You know, if you're telling me that this part is true, that there, there is this right presence in the room, how would you convince somebody of that? How would you present that as present any evidence for that? Um Oh, well, I mean, when I think of, I don't know, if I'm doing my morning quiet time or how do I, how do I seek God's leading in my life? Um, you know, that would be through prayer and, you know, talking to God. And yeah, I guess you would say, if I'm doing that, you know, do I really know he's there? Right? Yeah. Do I really know he's there? Um, mm, you know, I'm reading his word. And I guess in, in another sense, how am I being led? It's probably through other people, you know, mm. maybe other, oftentimes other Christians. And I think actually, you know, other non-Christians can, can be being used to helpful. form. It can be helpful form. human beings. <laughs> yep. Yep. For Absolutely. Sure. Totally yeah. helpful. No matter what you believe, sometimes, you know, everybody knows something you don't know. I love telling my kids that one. Oh, I mean, it's, it's true. It doesn't matter what you believe. There's still something in there that could be beneficial and helpful to me. So for sure. Absolutely. But that's not evidence yeah. for any specific God or deity or, you know. No, that's right. Um, I mean, if you, I mean, if you, right, if you do a deep, I mean, if you say God's word is true, mm -hmm. and if you say some of it's, I mean, some of it is factual, right? I mean, some of it is inarguably factual in terms of, I mean, I think the historic basis for Jesus is as strong as the historic basis for George Washington. That, that's that's the whole other topic right there, but yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> First then, off, I mean, there's then, no historical evidence that this man came back from the dead or performed any miracles. We have this Bible that says things. It also says that animals talk and, and blood curses and magic and all that stuff. So, I mean, it's it's really not the 100% most reliable thing in the world. Uh, the Genesis story itself, you, you brought that up. The, the, the first two chapters completely contradict each other. The storylines don't match up. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I don't find it as reliable as you do. And I'm very curious how you find it reliable. Just the Jesus part or... Like, I mean, I know there's like kings and, and events. There are some events that we can, you know, trace back to certain historical right. things. But the majority of it is, I mean, you look at Joshua, the story of Joshua and, the, and the, mm -hmm. the walls and all that stuff. I mean, we know that they didn't destroy it with trumpets. I mean, that doesn't happen. I mean, that's not okay. a real thing. And then we, we look at the historical evidence of it. And sometimes I'm, I'm not it might be the wrong one, but you look at these, these civilizations and they were destroyed by other civilizations or that they were destroyed before or after uh, the stories in the Bible claim they have been done. So there is a lot of discrepancy within the historical part of it. Um, so I, I just, yeah. yeah, I mean, have you heard about these things? Have you looked into the historical accuracy of it besides the Jesus part? Um, well, I mean, <laughs> specific to joshua and the walls of what jericho, comes jericho yeah. down. 
that's what it was. There I was not even I, any walls. That's what the, the, the historic, the archaeology I, I found out. Have there an, I couldn't have an informed discussion on that. Topic, yeah, me neither. It's been um, a while. <laughs> but you know, you know like go Genesis, the one and two, the contradiction there. It's a it's a two different storylines. You have one where Yahweh creates it, and then the other one where he's trying to find a helper for man. And the, the, the order in which he creates things is is different as well. Uh, man right. and woman, he creates man first in Genesis 2. And then the woman <laughs> the very last, because he's trying to find a helper. Nothing seems to fit. God doesn't know which one will fit. That's weird. And then, you know, he finally finds the woman. But in the first one, he just made them together. Or in chapter one, he just made them together. So it's, it's a, right. it's, how do you find these to be reliable and stuff? I mean, there's a talking snake. <laughs> I mean... We're going to go right. di full Disney here. You know, there's, there's talking animals. And then you got mm -hmm. Revelation at the end of the whole thing. Um, we're going to have all well, these that, animals that singing. Hasn't happened. That hasn't happened. Yet. No, yeah. but it, it you know. predicts singing animals and stuff. And that, that's just weird right. to me. You know, right. I, I, I um, can't get behind something like that. Yeah, no, that's legit. Um, I mean, the uh, I think the if we go through the Exodus story, that's mm -hmm. pretty solidly supported through historical is evidence. it though yes or no is it though <laughs> the people being led out of the promised land and all and, yeah, and all that I mean, stuff I mean, that we, many we, people leaving you don't think the the egyptians would have written something down like holy crap today you wouldn't believe it this god said right? he's going to come down and punish us and he did and we let all these people go because of it it was crazy and then there's mm -hmm. none of that you don't have any of that you don't have any of that yeah. that's that's the difference is the actual historical okay. records versus the bible you know yeah um well i mean are you are you telling me there's not just there's no archaeological or historic support for kind of what you know uh egyptians being being let out of or strike that Israelites leaving Egypt and all, and all that and, and ending up in the promised land. Yeah. There's no historical evidence for all those people leaving. Plus to top it off, I was reading a book. I think it was the Bible and earth, possibly that one uh, where, where it was telling me, telling me that the Egyptians had different things or, or stations set up towers set up. So if this many people were leaving, they would have seen them. And I mean, and then the fact they didn't write it down, that's a, kind of a big one. We don't have a big spot. We're like, Hey, a bunch of people went missing. We don't know where they went. You know, and then the Exodus okay. story itself says that God's going to show the Egyptians that he's the one true God. And after this, they will believe that he's the one true God. And it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Egyptians didn't turn to, you know, Judaism. They kept on their way. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of little things in there. And then the, the, yeah. the, 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 uh, the, the, the uh, oh my goodness, the plagues, the plagues themselves. We don't really have any Egyptian things saying, hey, one time the whole sun got blocked out because we wouldn't release the, the Israelites or the plague of frogs or even mm -hmm. the firstborn son, which is a horrible thing. Yahweh comes down and kills all these kids. Why? Because, yeah. you know, he's got to show off his powers. That's what he says in Exodus nine. Sure. Sure. Well, um, I don't like that story. <laughs> it's not a very nice story. <laughs> it sounds a little harsh. Um, <laughs> a little bit. But yeah, I mean, so um i don't know i mean is there other than i don't know whatever happened to me maybe a half hour ago that has a decent supporting record i mean there there are gaps in in history right we, you know for sure yeah if, if, if we're not an eyewitness i mean at some level you have to say you know what's what's evidence that makes you believe this happened or something hmm. um I don't know, right? Well, I mean, let's start off with if I if I have a history book, and it and it and it has blood magic in it, or talking animals in it, or a whole bunch of contradictions that say, let's say George Washington did such and such and such and such, but then right. all of a sudden in the next sentence it says, but he did this, 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 and this, and it totally contradicts the same thing. I wouldn't believe that history book. I would definitely be like, no way, man. First off, that contradicts itself. Second off, there's talking animals and blood magic. I know these things did not be it live in reality. You know, I, I, my dog can't talk to me, although she does think she can, but you know, I mean, I mean, it'd be nice. It'd be cool if we right. could have, carry on conversations with our animals, but right. Balaam's donkey is another one, you know, he, he, 
the donkey started talking to him. Right. <laughs> hey, why are you hitting me? Well, there's an angel, man. It's right in front. Why can't you see this? Why would Yahweh make the, the donkey talk, but not reveal the angel to the dude? It just, it, there's a lot of things that just don't add That's up. Fair. To yeah. That's fair. Okay. Um, hey, what else, uh, what else can we chat about? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, we can move on to the next thing you said, which was Yahweh's in control which I think is a very interesting lead into some, anything. Um, why do you think he's in control? What gives you that idea, first off? What gives me that idea? Um, that he's in control. Hmm. Generally, I would kind of speak to just, you know, my starting frame of reference is often that, you know, here's what my experience has been through 47 years of life and kind of seeing God's leading in my life. Hmm. That's, that's where I would start if somebody, you know, kind of asked me that question. Um, you know, right. The, these highs and lows and hmm. um, how God has used some of those, right. Negative stuff, good stuff to, build my faith hmm. that's where i would start with that discussion so because because you've had good and bad things but it's all turned out well in the end that that's yeah, your i'm not sure it's turned out all well in the end <laughs> of... <laughs> um i mean to me that's one of the biggest fallacies of a lot of a lot of christians is, hmm. is the idea that right you can trust god but you're really only saying you trust god uh like when the good result happens to me, mm. if you're really trusting God, you're, 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 you're saying he's in control, um, you know, of everything, the good and the bad, you know, I break my leg. Mm. I mean, or, you know, I get a million dollars, both of those situations. Well, I think if you're really, if you're really saying you trust, uh, God and his omnipotence, omnipresence type stuff. So what, what, let's go a little d darker. Cancer sure. and kids. Mm -hmm. Trust in God. What, are the, what about those kids that suffer and die from that? They, they, I've, I've talked to pastors who's lost children who have suffered, who've prayed. They've had right. whole cities praying for them. And, right. and still, you know, God gave that kid cancer and he died. That's All these sure. people think... suffered. That kid suffered. His, his family suffered. The community suffered. 100%. I don't see. No, I, yeah. I, I think those are the hardest questions. I mean, I, th I think it was some... And there was some train derailment recently where some couple were taken, you know, mm. like it was their 50th anniversary train ride. I, you know, they, that, I don't know. I'm yeah. actually in Florida, but I get kind of really a Chicago and working huh. in Chicago. And there was a nice little train ride from Chicago out to like the Pacific Northwest. And yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, yeah. Why do those three people die? I mean, I mean, if, if you, if, if the Bible's accurate about what the afterlife is, Mm. um then you know death isn't necessarily a bad thing right you're going to this other that's a slippery other, slope though other other side and right present heaven and eternal heaven to come well if and that's so then, why aren't we just killing everybody so they can go to a better spot hey you've been a really great person you know you're on your way to heaven bang there you're there you got it i just i just saved you all this crap and a possible tripping up and going to hell I mean, I mean, that really doesn't help out any. I mean, if well, we take that, if we take that and go with it, you know? Yeah. I mean, you can, you can go, you can go with it. Um, you can also say, Hey, I'm here because, you know, there's some people God wants me. There's a purpose for my life. A purpose. That would, that would be my worldview. Mm -hmm. You know, I, well, I mean, there's a purpose for my life and, you know, you know, I'm trying to glorify God through, you know, hopefully talking to you, but also. Yeah you know, serving people as a family law attorney, being a good husband, um, whatever, if my neighbor needs some help or something. I mean, I'm, I'm here, I'm, I'm here to do those things. I'm here to represent and be a disciple of, of, of Jesus while I'm here. And, you know, I, right. I'm going to go for a bike ride after this. I might get, I might get whacked. Oh, geez. But... <laughs> Let's hope that doesn't happen. Let's hope that's not in God's plan. Holy cow, man. Be safe out there. Wear a helmet. Hey. A little blinkers if you can. <laughs> Good grief. <laughs> Look both right. ways. So, <laughs> if that works, hey. 
it's just, it just it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me because if 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 God's in control of the good and the bad and 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 the bad is only there to teach us lessons and then we're going to go to heaven anyways if we're good while he's doing bad things to us and then and then it just goes right back to that whole why don't why don't we just start killing you know, it was Peter Laws I think it was a, a guy I talk Christian talk uh, I talked to who had a book out about uh, this Christian guy that was going around serial killer. He would go around and kill good people so that they would go to heaven. Well, that's messed up. Well, that's that's how it works, though. If, if they're just going to go to heaven and it's the best place anyways, why not me be the good person and send them there right away? Why don't I just go through my neighborhood? Hey, are you a good Christian? Oh, you are. Oh, you, I saved you, man. I saved you. You're going to heaven. That's That doesn't yeah. really make a whole lot of sense. I, 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 well, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense if it, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, even if you're trying to be a Bible following Christian who, who, you know, I, I don't think, I don't think murder is really. I will sacrifice that my soul that... to save all those other souls. I'll be better than Jesus in that aspect. I just look at all these people. I just send them to heaven. Look at that. I just immediately, they go to heaven. I don't have to die and wait for them to live their lives and, and possibly screw up and go to hell. But I mean, I think, I think murder is, I think murder is frowned upon by most you know, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure it's in the Ten Commandments, and I'm I'm pretty sure it's probably. That's where my in sacrifice New, comes in. New Testament too, right? That's where yeah. my Peter. That's where my sacrifice comes in, man. I saved the world right. by, you know, sacrificing my eternal soul to save everybody else's. Anyways, so how how does that prove your God though? How is that evidence for your specific deity? Any of this stuff, uh, your your goods and bads you've tra you've traveled through. Your you're doing good for the community. Your 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 healthiness. Your your good father good husband i can do all of those things and not need jesus as a matter of fact i do all of those things to the best of my right. abilities and i Agreed. don't need jesus so for that's sure. still that's not a good enough evidence for for your specific god mm -hmm. and then if we're going to go into well we can get there later <laughs> but how that, that's really not evidence is there anything else that's a little more besides your personal experiences or your you're striving to be a good father and husband and whatever's, you know, human being, be a good human being. You are striving to be a good human being is not evidence for your God. Yeah, I, I agree with that. It's, Just like my striving um, to be a good human being is not evidence for a lack of your God. It's not, none of it. It doesn't believe it's none of that. It doesn't even add up. So right. is there anything else? Well, well, um, if, uh, I mean, what a, I mean, if, if you know, I'm just going back to my George Washington example. I love it. Um, so, George Washington I mean, versus Jesus. What do I, <laughs> I'm not sure. I think he was a deist, probably. I'm not mm. sure he would have practiced. But I, I don't know. A lot of those founding fathers, a lot of those founding fathers were what that thing you described earlier that he made the world and then he left, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I mean, if, uh, well, I'm just trying to think of a of, of a picture. I mean, I don't. Do I want to veer away from my George Washington example? <laughs> I hope well, not. I mean, I'm 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 really talking about George just in the sense of right. I mean, there's pretty pretty good evidence that you know he was what the general of the Continental Army and hmm. whatever 1760s, 1770s. Evidence. We have a lot of evidence for that. Yeah. This happened in in Yorktown, and you know we won the war by uh, King George or whomever was down there. <laughs> and um, you know then he was a two term president. He built this good business at uh, you know Mount Vernon, hmm. and um, didn't chop down a cherry tree. <laughs> I, yeah, right. So yeah, right. So that's that's bogus. But um, you know if right, I mean. It, it, if George was seen as really kind of the great man, if you will, of that era, right? I mean, I think that's a lot of why he became president, right? I don't hmm. think there was an election in 17, what was it, 1787? I think you were selected by the Senate or something in that era. Don't don't totally grab my U.S. history on that, but you know, if um, you know, if this if this history of George during the war and through leadership that then became the supporting evidence for him to be a possibly good leader, good president. Um, if I can, I don't know, here's my analogy. Mm. Um, you know, if I can say, here's what happened with to Jesus 
And here how, here's how he lived his life for 33 years, and not just on biblical accounts, hmm. but, you know, there's, there's extra biblical evidence for the life of Jesus, just like there's, you know, you know, wide ranging support of the life of George Washington. Hmm. Um, you know, just, just like, you know, George's history through whatever the French Indian war, U S revolution support, you know, gave support to people to then make him president. I think, you know, there is support. I would avow the idea that, Hey, here's how this person lived their life. And then, oh, the supernatural resurrection happened that there's a good amount of support for that. Um, this is a this is a person to follow and believe is from God. I don't know what your original question was, but that's some that's some that's my attempt to, you know, more evidence, my equate, equate George and <laughs> um, and Jesus, Jesus versus George Washington. I love it. It's the title of this episode, just so you know. <laughs> that, hey, that's cool. That's cool. I mean, so George Washington. Let's pretend that George Washington. I have a story about George Washington walking across the Delaware. Sure. He didn't take a boat. He physically walked across the water, and then later on, he died and came back to life. Okay. We've got one book that says this. And then that's it. Are you, are you, are you going to believe that George Washington walking on water? Or are you going to believe that George Washington was a real person? He lived some time and he did some stuff. Nothing really crazy like walking across water and coming back to life. That's mm -hmm. where I stand with Jesus. Okay. Even if he was a real person, I don't know. I haven't. There's a lot of stuff out there. Let's just assume he was. And he okay. did some things and he talked some things and he said some things, which we have no idea because this, this is so just distorted and, and confused and con contradicting. And we don't know if that's really the words of Jesus. We, there's no way we can really find that out unless we have a time machine mm -hmm. or Yahweh tells us. So right. I forgot where I was going with this. Oh yeah. The Washington thing. So why, why Jesus, why would you believe all the extraordinary things that Jesus did in the Bible versus anything else anybody else did so I, I, it doesn't make any sense well, to me well i don't i don't think it's accurate for hmm. you to only say it's only in that book i mean there were right i mean right he was jesus was living in a society uh -huh. and frankly in the grand in the grand like history of the world it wasn't that long ago i mean it's longer ago than george but I'm not a super world history person, but I mean, right. I mean, there are plenty of people in, in eras like before, before Christ that are pretty like supported in terms of the his, historicity, I think would be the word. Let's go with cult leaders that, who have performed miracles. You know, mm -hmm. what, do you think that those cult leaders have performed miracles? Um, the Kool-Aid guy. I can't remember his name right now for some reason. It escapes me. But oh, he, Jimmy he, Jones? That's the one. Apparently, he performed miracles as well. His his followers and believers saw him do things. Why, mm -hmm. why would you... Do you believe those happened? I only know the end game with those people, and it didn't sound too great. Well, they went um, to heaven. In other words... It was great. Mm -hmm. They're happy. They went to heaven. That was the whole thing. I, I know the uh, low-level idea of jim jones and you know drink the kool-aid in whatever yeah. country they were horrible, in. South, horrible. South america i think oh absolutely it was horrible, horrible stuff man. um it's poor people but um I, you know i mean to me it's just it, it's it's there's a pretty good historical record that supports jesus right mm. that that's my opinion that's my i don't think that's an opinion I mean, hmm. you can question maybe accuracy, right? I mean, there, right, there's a different side to everything, but there's a lot of evidence beyond Jesus, right? In terms of like, right, I don't know. I was I was a sort of history major in college, right? You have like primary sources, you have secondary sources. Mm -hmm. um, I think all of those are there for for Jesus and, you know, people who are around him for what, the 33 years he's, he was around. And it wasn't just the Bible saying he, he was raised from the dead. Um, you know, there are a lot of witnesses to that. I, I, I mean, don't know of any that were, wrote anything down. I don't know of any eyewitnesses that wrote anything down. Even the Bible, these people don't claim to be eyewitnesses of the actual resurrection. These are just stories that were passed down. Okay. Um, um, so as far as resurrection... I mean, mm -hmm. 
that's fair. I mean, I, you know, I, I would just quote just some of the what you want. I mean, some of the some of the accounts of, of Jesus on the Emmaus Road and Jesus in the tomb and some of that stuff in the gospel gospels. You know, it's pretty. I don't I don't think that the time window from when that was written versus when it happened was very long. What is well, it? none of them actually. 50, 60 AD versus 33 AD kind of thing. There's a lot of contradictions in them between the two of them, between the two of them, the four of them, all the different stories. You've got the, where am I going through my cards? Yeah, cards, because I can't remember anything. Uh, Matthew, we've got Matthew, the birth story is different. Uh, the ending, we've got two robbers heaped insults on him. Oh man, don't forget about the, uh, all the people that came back from the dead in Matthew. I totally forgot about that. All those people that came back and, and walked around the city and, and, and preached the gospels and all kinds of stuff. We don't, do we have record of that one too? Or is it just here in Matthew? Just in Matthew, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I, I, I re recollect. Um, so we've got some, yeah. some pretty strange claims there. Uh, the, the resurrection we have uh, in Luke is two men in bright clothes and then the resurrection we have in Mark is a young man dressed in white. And the resurrection we have in John is two angels. And then the resurrection, it's, it's, it's like, it's so weird. If these people really had the accurate truth story of what happened, right. why do we have so many different versions and variations? Well, I don't, I don't find that to be difficult to fathom at all, right? I mean, if, if you and I both observed you know, name it. I mean, if you and I both observe a college football game, uh -huh. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to describe it in one way and you're going to describe it in another, right? I mean, there's not, there's not like one storyline of an event, right? I mean, that's just, right. You, you, you read 20 different stories about some, some event. They're not all the same. Let's go right? with a hockey game. So I, I, I like watching hockey. Ahead. It's one of my favorites. Oh, I, gosh. Pretty much the only sport I like. If you want to talk sports, I mean, and want me to be competent, it's <laughs> got to be say... college football or golf, but go ahead. <laughs> I just want to apologize to my buddy Jimmy in Canada. He hates hockey. Sorry, Jimmy. <laughs> anyway, so we, let's take a hockey game. We've got so many players that are on the rink at, or on the rink, on the ice at the time. We've got, sure. you know who they are. You've got their names across there. We know right. this right. is historical. Sure. It's a historical right. record. When you go into the book, uh, the, the book that's supposed to be the truth, the Bible, you go into Jesus's resurrection, you have different people at the resurrection each time. How is that accurate? How can you believe what happened if they're changing the players up? Well, which player was there? How am I supposed to know that even happened? Did the game even take place? This doesn't even make sense. Well, I don't think the game taking place, I don't think we're at that level of despair. If you keep going through the whole thing, though, yes, not one little crumb is going to, you know, oh, yes, definitely didn't play, take place. But when you go through each story, there are so many things. Mm -hmm. I'm just, just taking a piece of it at this point. But that's just one aspect. If if you heard about a hockey game, a football game, golf game, whatever, if you heard about it and the players were all mumbled jumbled and each time you heard about it, would you believe the sources? Yeah, I mean, if <laughs> I'd switched over to a new channel, there'd be a new sports channel for me. I, who's on the how? Who's on the field? How do you, not you got, know who's on the field? Right. Well, right. There's a there's a grade there though that right. I mean, if if we're talking, I don't know, if the mumble mumble jumbledness <laughs> is, is is such that I can't even tell this is a hockey game and. Mm. I, you know, that sort of thing. But if, hmm. if, if we're saying, you know, hey, here, my, my hockey reference is like a, a miracle on ice in 1980. So <laughs> that's what I've got for you. I mean, um, the, the movie Miracle with uh, Herb Brooks, um, hmm. you know, so, right. I mean, if you and I were journalists at that game, you know, it, 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 if, if we both at least said, I don't even remember what the score was. I think it was three to two or four to three or something. You know, US won, US won. Mm -hmm. You know, I might highlight X, Y, and Z. You might hi highlight A, B, and C. I don't know. Am I bothered I... by the? Am I bothered by the fact your story highlighted A, B, C, mine highlighted X, Y, Z? I like this. Yet, I... A yeah. hockey game still was played where the United States beat the old, you know, USSR. I don't have a problem with 
But that story, I mean, isn't isn't that half of what like all the media in the world is these days? It's kind of like different, you know, what um, different viewpoints or sort of mm. perspectives, often on the very same um, actual events. And I don't know, does that does that make it less believable? I can see the oh, viewpoint I, as as far as you know, if that goal counted, we can we can challenge that viewpoint. But who's on the field? Who's on the ice? We can't challenge that. Either they're there or they're not. Right. And if you're a Fair reporter enough. who's telling me that there's different people on the field than this other reporter and this other reporter, uh, who do I believe yeah. at that point? I got to find one that's more accurate. I got to be able to see who's there. Use that evidence. Evidence. Here we go again. You know, to, to see who's there, to, to judge for myself. And I'm not maybe, going to rely on a source maybe you're the Maybe me, you're the big picture reporter. <laughs> and you have some more eph ephemeral kind of viewpoint and i'm like used to being the play-by-play -play radio voice so i have these <laughs> super details where you're as the you're you're the guy who does like the once a month kind of like big uh big top level global thing so mm. you're not talking details you're talking about the the scope of uh hockey um momentum or something right, right. but no i mean you, you can take it to a point mm. where it's not believable. 100% yeah. agree with that statement. Yeah. You know, are, are, are the Gospels at that point? I would suggest they're not, but somebody could say they are. Mm. Mm. I, you know, I don't, I don't think it's at like the, let's call it the 2% of this is incredible. I don't, I don't know, right? What's some, I don't know if I have a media source or just something off the top of my head right now where I would say, this is something I just, I don't know, The Onion, The Onion, right? The Humor <laughs> Magazine, right? I mean, Versus right, the I mean, inquirer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, right? Yeah. Those those aren't credible, but I mean, is the difference between the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal make me say this isn't credible or this isn't credible just because, you know, they're they're so, gonna color it a slightly different way, the same event, whatever. They're they're probably yeah. both gonna have a story tomorrow about something that happened in, you know, Washington. I don't, you know, I'm not really following, but you're right. It's going to be the same event and, and it's going it's, to be colored slightly different, yeah. but does that make me feel like New York Times is incredible, Wall Street Journal is incredible? No, I would find, I find them both credible and I think they both have, you know, different, you know, ideologies though. Skewed differently, for sure. Skewed different, different, skewed different point of view, for sure. all that fun for stuff, sure. but the, the basics are still there. Who's there, who's involved and what happened. Uh, mm -hmm. With the Bible, we don't get that. We get a lot of the contradicting stuff there. Um, I, I, this okay. is great. Thank you so much. Um, I do want to end it on okay. one thing because you are the law attorney. I totally wanted to talk about law a little bit. We didn't even get to that, but that's oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> the biblical sure. law. <laughs> I know. I was, I was jotting my notes down to talk to debate, like, you know, biblical bases for marriage. And oh, we man. I love it. New that's York good. Times and, you know, USA, that was it. Russia that's what else I was going to say. From the 80s. <laughs> so, uh, the New York Times, another thing I find it a little more credible is these, these bigger. Uh, news sources or media sources, if they get something wrong, they will actually go back and, and correct it or tell you that they we, we screwed up here. This was who was actually there, you know, and, and fixes the problem. We don't see that in the Bible. We just get those contradictory parts. And that's what I forgot to say earlier. But <laughs> I did want to go on the Jesus divorce part real quick here. Not real quick, but I guess at the end here. Um, what is what is your thoughts on biblical teachings on divorce uh, biblical teach yeah no i hear you um what do i think the bible espouses or what's my opinion on what the bible espouses? all of the above because <laughs> i mean i got my jesus verse where he talks about divorce um and saying it's just the same thing as uh, adultery if you marry a divorced woman um, yeah the bible's definitely frowned on it i mean is this how does that work for you yeah, I mean, if somebody asked me, hey, what's what are biblical bases for divorce? I mean, I would, I think an accurate answer of that question in the Bible would be, would be, yeah, it would be adultery. And I think you could probably make an argument for, well, I think there's actually verbiage, it's it's sexual sin. I don't know, there are a couple of little, little Matthew 5, 32, anyone who divorces sin. his wife, except for marital unfaithfulness causes her to become an adulteress. And anyone who marries the divorced woman commits adultery. Right. Yeah. I've seen some, you know, is it adultery or is it a little, how do you, how do you, how narrow is, 
whether it be adultery or sexual sin, what hmm. what is that? Is it just what you know me having an affair outside of marriage? Is is it specifically that? Is it a little broader window? Didn't Jimmy Carter during an election say <laughs> I'd committed adultery by uh, like looking or lusting at another woman? Yeah, and I, yeah. I say that I say that smiling, but I think there is some debate about what what that sexual sin definition really encompasses. Hmm. And then you know beyond that, I think. Kind of in First Corinthians seven, you have some support and discussion of kind of like abandonment. You mm. know, if somebody abandons the marriage, so um, I think you're you're talking about those two boxes, and I don't know. I it's it's difficult. Um, I don't know. I mean, we could really go down a rabbit hole on some of those. I love rabbit holes. Yeah. No, I got you. <laughs> but I mean, like. Because, right, I mean, you know, I certainly run into other things of, like, super, like, a wrong behavior. You know, mm. I don't know. The most logical ones would be things like domestic violence. Like, mm. you know, yeah. you, you run into that. You know, I got a client right now who's, mm. I got a picture of her sitting on our hard drive with a black eye. Mm. You know, it's like, is she supposed to stay with this guy? I'm not, you know, I don't know. Hey, man. I don't know their faith position. I don't think they're Christians. But, mm. you know. You know, they're right. There's a different perspective, right? I mean, you know, the, the Bible's rules aren't everyone's rules. They're they're a Christian's rules. So, hmm. um, but, but are they are they are they really good rules? I mean, we can go into the adultery part here because in, in this verse specifically, Matthew five sure. thirty two here, when it says that you marry a divorced woman, then uh, commit adultery, and anyone who commits, yeah, that they can commit adultery. That's because she's still married to the original guy. She didn't divorce him for the right reasons, which would have been marital and faithfulness, and not abusiveness or you know threats or I don't know whatever oh, sure. else. But I mean, it's it's mainly yeah. focusing on that marital unfaithfulness. So, mm -hmm. do you think? And then, of course, the punishment for adultery in Leviticus twenty verse ten and Deuteronomy twenty two twenty two, you know, is death. You know, right. Yahweh does not look kindly on that. Um, so, is Jesus who who fully followed the laws? believed mm -hmm. in them, told us that they're awesome several times, um, said this. And so does that mean that Jesus wanted these adulteresses who got remarried to be punished by death? Is that what he's saying? Um, here? Cause that's what it sounds like no. to me. Mm, I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't think Leviticus applies to me today. Ah, Epic. <laughs> you think so? Why? Why well, do you think Leviticus doesn't apply to you today? Well, I, I, I mean, I think, I, I think as you know, Jesus, Jesus ushered in a new covenant, and mm. you know the the laws and all that sacrificial stuff. Um, you know, Jesus is the Lamb of God, and all. Um, you know the 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 biblical the the Levitical law. I don't I don't think is is applicable to me today as a as a as a follower of jesus why okay is there a spot a verse or anything you can point to that says that those laws no longer apply to you um no i can't not not gonna not gonna not gonna try and suggest yeah. i have i have that level of expertise but you know. but you just believe it or I, like where do you get the idea from then mm, well just the idea that um the I, you know, my, my, my perspective is that, that Jesus ushered in, um, you know, Jesus came and forgave my sins and therefore, you know, kind of the old way of uh, righting my wrongs through sacrifices and all of the Old Testament teaching on that point, no longer apply to new, you know, post Jesus uh, Christ followers. So. Gotcha. I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to quote Jesus here, Matthew 5, okay. 18 through 19. Fair enough. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, which hasn't happened, we can both agree, right. heaven and earth are still For here. Sure. Not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever okay. practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Such a weird thing there. We'll get into that. Uh, for I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses the Pharisees, blah, 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 blah. So Jesus here is telling us that the laws still abide until heaven and earth disappear. These are holy, righteous, okay. perfect, you know, 
Yahweh laws. This, this is how he thinks. This is what he wants. Right. And, and right. that's gross to me right off the bat. That's like, wow. You look at all these laws. This is what really how Yahweh thinks. This is really what he wants. That's kind of weird, man. There's so many things in there that are so abhorrent. Um, but yeah, what do, what do you think of that? How's that sit? How's that um, work you? Uh, that's tough to swallow. That's tough to swallow. It, it, there's a lot in there. I mean, that's that's. Uh, it sounds like I need to do a little little deeper dive on that. <laughs> uh, and, and and some of those some of those verses there because yeah i mean you know i mean the teaching i'm always familiar with it just kind of like you know post jesus you know you're a new you, you know you're a new covenant person and um yeah but jesus you know, isn't the of, best he's man. kind of taken care of that there's a, there's a lot of jesus stuff in there man you should definitely study up on jesus he he's quite the character um for sure. not, the, not the prince of peace he says he says so right there he came to bring a sword but division uh you can't follow him unless you hate your family there's so many things in there about Jesus. I can throw a bunch of verses hey, at you. Families, but, you know, family's not universally good. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true, though. <laughs> good point. Uh, hey, but yeah, there, there's just a lot of stuff in there. That, you know, I know I hear a lot. Jesus is love. Jesus is this this great guru, and we should follow in his footsteps. But man, if you really read what Jesus is in the Bible, whoo, it's it's not so great. It's not all uh, rainbows and flowers and unicorn farts. It's sometimes fire death and swords you know so yeah i, don't, I didn't know about the unicorn farts but <laughs> the, the rest, the rest you didn't know that cool. verse <laughs> i'll have to find it for you i'll get back to you <laughs> yeah, that's cool. i don't think it's in there but but you know what i mean it, it's just there's there's so much in there that's difficult for me to to grasp and to follow and to to get a hold of and 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 i, I thank you so much for sharing all that with me today uh what you believe your your evidence that you have and whatnot that you know, you feel convinced you. So thank you for your time. This is pretty much it. We're done here, but tell us where we can find your stuff. Um, you can find my course at transformyour.family. That's where, that's where my digital products are. That's where mm -hmm. that mar marriage course is. And mm -hmm. I don't know if you, if you need family law legal services in Chicago, we're at familylawchicago.com. So uh, thanks again for having me, Michael. Awesome, man. I appreciate your time and your patience. Talk to you later. Right. We'll keep it Be well. Absolutely. Take care. You too. And that's all the show there is for you today. Thanks for listening. If you like what you heard and want to help keep the recording light on, simply go to patreon.com forward slash BSW the podcast and sign up to be a supporter of the show. Your episodic tithes of a dollar or more will give you access to the patron feed, unaired conversations, early access to each episode, and much more. For the latest events, BSW swag, and a peek behind the scenes, head on over to the show's ever-evolving webpage at thebiblesayswhat.com. The Bible Says What the book is out. Head on over to thebiblesayswhat.com and get yourself and your grandma a signed copy. Thanks to the cosmic powers of the internet, it is now possible to buy me a beer or coffee online. Simply go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash BSW the podcast and click the appropriate buttons. If you can't support the show monetarily, please like, share, and or leave a review. As always, you can find me at the Bible Says What Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, or Instagram pages. You can also reach me at bswthepodcast at gmail.com. And no matter which platform you use to listen to your podcasts, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you won't miss out on the next episode. Until then, would you kindly pick up your Bibles and read them? Brought to you by Voodoo Ranger. Get you some.